Something big is happening in the world of technology, but it's not making front page headlines. There is no dramatic press conference, no flashy announcements. Instead, it's a quiet but powerful shift, one that could change the global tech landscape forever. While the US has been busy trying to block China from getting its hands on advanced semiconductors, China has been working on something of its own. Not a copy, not a workaround, but a whole new path. And it all starts with a tiny piece of silicon called the RISC-V chip. This isn't about tech, it's about power, global influence, control over the future. And if you are wondering who's winning this war, the answer might surprise you. If you are finding this eye opening, hit that like button and share this video. It helps the channel grow and gets these stories in front of more people. So what exactly is RISC-V and why is it such a big deal? Most computer chips today are built using proprietary instruction sets. That means companies like Intel and ARM own the architecture and if you want to build on it, you need permission or a license. That control gives the West an incredible amount of power over who gets access to high-tech capabilities. RISC-V flips that model on its head. It's an open source instruction set, basically a free and open blueprint for how chips operate. No single company or country owns it. No one can block its use and that makes it a game changer for countries like China which have been on the receiving end of tech sanctions for years. By adopting risk -V, China has unlocked a way to design, build and scale cutting edge chips without needing approval from the West. No gatekeepers, no restrictions, just innovation on their own terms. Let's rewind a bit. Over the past few years, the US has tightened the screws on China's access to advanced tech, especially semiconductors. Huawei got hit hard. Export bans were slapped on chip making tools and designs. The goal was simple, slow China down. But instead of striking back with tit for tat sanctions, China chose a different path. It poured billions into its own tech industry, supporting everything from university research to ambiguous startups and big state-backed firms. That patient, long-term strategy has now paid off. The result, a fully functional, homegrown, risky chip. Not just a prototype, but something that can be mass-produced, upgraded and improved. Even more important, it's not just one company leading the charge. It's an entire ecosystem of Chinese firms working together, sharing progress and moving forward fast. This isn't just about chips. It's about who gets to lead the next chapter of the digital age. For decades, the US held the high ground in tech. Proprietary systems, key patents and tight control over supply chains kept other countries dependent on Silicon Valley. But now, China is creating an alternative, an open source, self-sustaining ecosystem that others can join. And that's where things get really interesting. Think about countries in the global south, places caught in the middle of US-China tensions. For them, Chinese-designed risk chip offers a new option. They can build modern digital systems without relying on US-based technologies or risking secondary sanctions. It's a lifeline and a path toward tech independence. Why does open source matter so much in this story? Because it scales fast, it's collaborative, and it can't be shut down by a single government. We have already seen this play out in the software world. Linux, for example, became the backbone of everything from smartphones to servers thanks to its open model. Now the same thing could be happening with hardware with China leading the charge. And here is what's different this time. China isn't copying, it's innovating, and it's building something new. The narrative is no longer about stolen ideas, it's about strategic planning, massive investment, and long-term vision. The US didn't lose its edge overnight, 
but it might have gotten too comfortable. For too long, Washington focused on short-term wins, political points, trade deals, and quick sanctions. Meanwhile, China was playing the long game, investing in people, building infrastructure, creating a future-proof tech ecosystem from the ground up. The U.S. still leads in many areas, but it's increasingly reactive instead of proactive. It's relying on bands to slow others down, rather than building momentum of its own. And that's risky, because when the world changes and you are not ready for it, you don't just fall behind, you lose control of the narrative. What do you think about this shift? Is the US falling behind, or Canada still turn things around? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear your take on this. China isn't just catching up anymore. In some areas, it's pulling ahead. We are talking about serious advances in 3D chip stacking, high bandwidth memory, and AI-specific processors. These aren't low-end knockoffs, they are next-generation technologies built for speed, power, and adaptability. And the best part for China? They are doing it with local resources, from mining raw materials to designing the chips to manufacturing the final products. It's all happening inside China's borders. That means faster production, better integration, and less vulnerability to outside pressure. And remember all those engineers and computer scientists China's been graduating over years? They're not just sitting around. They're working in labs, launching startups, and building the backbone of this new tech economy. Riskwe is just the beginning. Now that the foundation is laid, China is scaling up, new factories are coming online, universities are training a new generation of chip designers, consumer electronic companies are already preparing to ship products with risk free chips inside. From smartphones to smart homes, servers to satellites, this architecture is going everywhere, and once that momentum kicks in, it's hard to stop. The US might try to push back, but without its own open source approach, it's fighting a modern tech battle with outdated tools. Meanwhile, China is setting the pace, playing the long game, and reshaping the global market in its favor. What's happening with Riskwe is more than a tech story, it's a tectonic shift in global power. For decades, the West dominated digital infrastructure, but open source chips offer a new path, one that's freer, faster, and harder to control. China has recognized that opportunity, seized it, and run with it. The result, a world where control over digital tools is more evenly spread, where countries have real choices, and where the future of technology isn't decided by just one nation or company. The U.S. still has a chance to lead, but only if it's willing to adapt. That means investing in open innovation, thinking long-term, and moving beyond the politics of control. Because in this new world, collaboration wins, openness wins, and those who cling to the past risk being left behind. If you have made it this far, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, Subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. The world is changing fast. Let's make sense of it together.